This video is going to demonstrate how to download data from landfire.gov. Uh, to begin, you're going to go to this blue world, green arrow, and there are three different options for obtaining Landfire data. You can get a link from uh, this area here, and you can um, input that into ArcGIS Online. You can look at the directions that are listed there. Uh, you can also download a, a mosaic, which means you can download the uh, Landfire data for each individual layer for the entire um, coverage area. And the third method, which I'll be demonstrating here, is from the data distribution site where you can download the Landfire data um, for selected layers for portions of the United States. Um, so to begin, it shows you a map of where the current Landfire data products are. This map is updated regularly as um, products are, be are available. So this might look a little bit different than what you see on your map. So I'm going to click generally where I would like to download my data. It's letting me know that the first thing that I'll be displaying is the Landfire um, 1.4 product. And I'm actually going to be turning that off so that I can see my visual layer underneath. Now I can um, get a better idea about where my area is going to be that I'm going to be downloading. And I'm going to be downloading data for the entire Lataw County. So zooming into that area and then I'll draw I'll go to the download tool over here and I'm going to select the data that I'd like to download. So the vegetation from Landfire data is still on, so I'm going to turn that off. And then I'll go to the most recent product, which is what I'm interested in, in obtaining. And I am going to select existing vegetation type and existing vegetation type. This is NVC, can't quite see it there. And then in the fuel data, I'm going to be looking for the 40 fiber behavior fuel models. I'm looking for the data layers that I'll need to do some fire modeling. Um, I could, of course, just download the LCP file here, the landscape file, but I'm going to be doing some um, exploration and manipulation uh, with the individual pieces, so I want them separately as well. So I'd like the canopy height, canopy cover, canopy base height, and canopy bulk density. Once I have all my layers selected, I will draw this box around Lataw County. Um, once I get to this page, I'm going to select Modify. And the first thing I'm going to do is change my projection from NAT83 to Best Fit UTM. Uh, next, I'm going to um, add some additional layers to my download request. Uh, at this time, these uh, three layers aren't available on the data distribution site. You can access them here to download Aspect, Elevation, and Slope, which are important pieces for my landscape um, uh, file that I'll be using for fire modeling. I'm also interested in the land fire map zones so that I can see if there's any impact um, on from land fire map zones in the data for my, my county. And then just looking around making sure that I have um, the other things that I need because this is the time to make any changes I'd like to my order before I download them. Looks like I have all the pieces that I need so I will now click Save Changes and Return to Summary. And my technique for uh, downloading all these files is just to systematically click download on each one. And as they process, they will go into my downloads folder. And once they're all done, then I will collect them from there. So you want to count um, the number of layers that you think that you've downloaded, and I've counted here, double counted twice, I've got 12 layers there, and I believe all my files have now downloaded. So I'll go to my download section, and we've got my 12 zip files here as well. So I'm just going to select all of these, and take them out, and I'm going to put them into my project folder. So here's my project folder for Lataw County. Notice there are no spaces in my path name. This is super important. Whenever you're doing work with GIS, do not include spaces in your path name. And then you're going to go through and you're going to unzip each of these files. All right, now I've got them all unzipped. And I want to, of course, count them again to make sure I've got all the data that I need. And I'm going to be using these data for quite a while. So I want to make sure that I have this stuff really organized. So I'm going to make a folder here for my land fire stuff. And 
I'm going to put all these data files in them. I am going to keep my, my zip files in case something happens with um, the data as I'm changing it or looking around, then at least I'll have a backup um, for, the, for the data. So now I'm going to put this into ArcGIS Pro. If you um, want to stop the video here, you're welcome to. I'm just going to walk you through the process that I use to get my data organized in Arc Pro. All right, so I'm going to open up a new map here and just demonstrate some good principles to making sure that you have your data saved and your project saved in a reasonable way. So I'm going to name my project something um, meaningful. So this is going to be Leta County. And I'm going to be putting this in a folder where I'll, I know I'll be able to find it later, which is in my new Leta County folder. And when I create a new project, it's going to create a new geo database for me. And that geo database is where I'm going to be saving um, my land fire data. All right, so first I'm going to turn on my contents um, pane so that I can see not contents, my um, catalog pane, so I can see where my data are. And I've got my folder connections here, and here's Leta County uh, that I just created. Uh, but I need to connect to the folder right above this, which is where all my, my data layers are. Um, so I can go to my C drive, Leta County, And now here you can see um, this home folder, Laytalk County, that's the same folder there. And I also have all of these folders here. Um, so I could just go through and add each of these, add each of these individual rasters. Um, that takes some time and I'm gonna be adding and removing these quite a lot. So I'm gonna take the moment that I have to um, update this geo database for my project. So I'm gonna go to my analysis tools and look for a raster to geodatabase tool and this tool will allow me to input these rasters into the geodatabase and it will also uh, because it's saved as my default folder when I do an, any additional creations of, um, of rasters uh, within these data sets it'll save to my default folder which is always really important to make sure that everything's saving to the appropriate location so that you can find it later. All right, so now I'll locate each of my input rasters so that they can be added to this geodatabase. C drive. And you'll do this for each one of those land fire layers. All right, so now I should have 10 layers here. I originally downloaded 12. Two of them don't aren't, aren't rasters that fit into this geodatabase. So one of is the um, a vector file for the landfire map zones, and the other is uh, the LCP file, which isn't going to go into here. And then I want to designate my output geodatabase, which um, by default should go at least toward my landfire folder. We want it to go into this geodatabase for our project. All right, so that's done. Let's check it out. Close my geoprocessing window. And here is my Leta County Geo database. And there all my layers are. It's wonderful. So now I can just pull all those in uh, to, my, to my map. And I can display them. And I'm going to select no for that. It just changes the speed at which things process. There you go downloading land fire data.